upstairs. Nia coming in, but will take the hit. Eruption on the generator as well. Eruption and call of ride. Nia does take a hit through the wall. So I don't know. Oh, and the dissolution value. The survivors. Deliverance from Claudette's. Sprint bursting to the hot. It's the same with these masks in the one event. She did get a Ooh. mask either. Uh, but, um, no. Like, oh, oh, the that, yeah, oh, that was nice. They're trying to oh, pull oh, E. Nerf Nancy, man. She's gonna get hacked, maybe? Oh my god, she might just get hacked, potentially. I think she does. Holy cow. I cannot yeah. believe. They do get the spirit reset and they get the down. Yes, they will get the survivors, leaving the trial and there's going to be the teleport with the end of the hatch. The end is to go. All Hello. right. <laughs> and, uh... Morning. Welcome everyone to Champions of the Fog. We are hosting Dead by Daily Community Cup today, and joining me today as we are going to be witnessing Cynic versus Air Buddies is the man, the myth of Dead by Daily himself, Mr. Otstarva. And I don't know how I ended up here, but it is a pleasure to be sharing this space with you. Uh, super, super quick recap of the recap of the recap. We are in the quarterfinals of the DVD Community Cups NA, North America and around. And in this map, we have Larry's and a choice of up to four killers. The most common one being Ghostface, which is the pick for our killer from Team Cynic, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but in the previous DVD Community Cups, Team Cynic made it to the finals. They are a very strong team, considered one of the strongest ones here. And it it really shows how clean and precise that 99 was. Even though uh, we had a survivor reveal or killer, that survivor, Nia, is now in a bit of a, of a difficult spot could totally uh go down to a quick uh mark and stab later on yeah what do you think absolutely of i mean really speaking you were right on the nose as far as things concerned they are well seasoned team they're actually a team that also participates in champs of the fog here in our league and they are a powerhouse and a force to be reckoned with so i'm looking forward to seeing these matches here in both quarters potentially semifinals and then the finals of the na cup and as you're saying ultra here obviously really well versed in everything that they do is they got that 99 percent on nia to a t they're not using their stock haphazardly we're seeing a potential down here on kate if they can utilize this tile correctly and uh looks like we do also see color brine off in the distance there which was highlighted in yellow earlier an absolutely precise move from Ghostface. I'm not gonna lie, I would have expected the survivor to not even drop the pallet at this moment, like knowing how critical it was. Eruption did seem to trigger. I don't know if you caught anyone screaming, but that is a great start for a killer getting it down this early with someone marked and someone injured is a pretty good place to be. Obviously one generator going away in the distance, not much you can do around that. I think our killer should be pretty happy that he's a fantastic performance so far. Yeah, so far, really, really strong start. Survivors here also keenly aware of not only Colorbrine, as we saw earlier, we saw Eruption. They're also keenly aware of Sloppy Butcher. And I don't know about you, but Comp Sloppy Butcher is almost a mainstay, a staple of every M1 115 killer. The mingled stats effect is just so important to killers nowadays, especially with Ghostface, as we do see a lot of hit and run playstyles. But we see the mark on Nia, body blocked Ooh. by the Kate. That there is a quick down, and I think we're going to see a tunnel out as well. Yep, eruption triggered on the gens previously kick. A little bit of a clumsy play from these two. It seems the killer doesn't just want an inch, they want to take the mile. <laughs> oh, believe it or not, that was pretty damn close. I don't know if they will be happy with that uh, unhook. In a normal match, picking up that Nia seems like the obvious play. You might as well, right? But in this situation, the killer is fully aware that one of the players on the survivor side has the perk. Excellent. Uh, the perk. Deliverance, you don't want to pick up someone that will turn into an easy sell on hook. So I think our killer wanted more than that. And honestly, that was amazing from them. 
Yeah, honestly, really good plays here by the killer, knowing full well what to expect. And I mean, when you're playing at this level, you're going to know every single piece of the builds that the survivors, that the killers are bringing. It's all about having all the right information to work with as you need throughout the match. So survivors know what the killer's perks are, killers knowing what the survivor's perks are potentially going to be. And then we're going mm -hmm. to see later down the line, if we do see Nia with that deliverance in hand later. I wouldn't be I wouldn't be surprised. It is typically a good idea. Oh my goodness! No way! That was ridiculous. That was really close. Somebody in the chat brought up the fact that this killer has brown addons. Guess what? Those brown addons allowed this killer to get their power back quicker and make that stock 20% faster, which in this situation meant the absolute difference between a down and not a down. Huge play from our killer there. Yeah. Smart thinking looking at the ground to have an easier time stalking. Very unfortunate. Um ambush from our fang but make no mistake playing this map is a lot easier said than done the communication on this map really tests how strong a team is and it is so difficult yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, at the end of the day, Fang must have gotten a jump scare of their life as Ghostface was right on top of them, marking them from that halfway point and able to get the down two. I mean, Ghostface in a really strong position here. Four survivors injured, all with Sloppy Butcher applied. So the collective time necessary to heal all four of them is about the equivalent of more than a generator. So the amount of pressure Ghostface here ha has is insurmountable. I absolutely agree. I really appreciate how our Ghostface uses... Oh, that was really close. Uses crouching mid loop to really throw survivors off. Notice that survivors here are happy to give a down on a person that likely has deliverance because that would be much more preferable than having this survivor be killed right now. Remember, Katie's on her second hook and losing a survivor of three gens, no matter how crafty the rest of the team is, is never easy. This survivor now has massive pressure on them, but they seem to be living up to it, getting the reveal and making this as hard as possible. Oh, there's no, Ooh. that's so close. It's always heartbreaking from the survivor perspective when you're on the other side of that pallet, down on the ground after the stun, but as a killer, it is an absolute treat. And I do believe that this case being sent back to the campfire via the entity, leaving three survivors from Air Buddies left in the match as they need to complete an additional three generators in order to escape via the exegates. Now, if you think Eruption, Call of Brian, and all these perks are brutal on a 4v1 sometimes, they are so much better in a 3v1. These perks really begin to shine now. Sloppy, if it hurt before, now it hurts double that. Unfortunately, no information coming from anyone to call that out. Uh, Thank perhaps being a little bit too uh, careless, uh, got ambushed again. This should be a very difficult game to come back from, especially considering that their only deliverance might be Nia. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one of the things you have to recognize about Ghostface, and I say it time and time again, a lot of people say Wraith, one of the best stealth face killers, but honestly, Ghostface, with being able to go from undetectable to down in a survivor like that, is shown in that moment, especially if a lot of line of sight bloggers here, as we're seeing in treatment theater. I mean, this is going to be really difficult for everybody's survivors to come back from mm -hmm. as of this moment in time. Uh that being said, comebacks in a 3v1 are not at all unheard of in, in a competitive setting. Uh, for some of you watching at home, if you play just normal public games, typically when it's a 3v1, if there's more than two gems left to go, that is almost always a default win for killer. But Swabbers at this level are very coordinated. They can come back from very difficult situations and every single gen matters. Even if these Swabbers all end up dying, doing an additional generator or maybe even securing an escape through the hatch or the exegate can make the difference between 10 points and 11 points. And that could give you the win. They cannot give up no matter how dire the situation looks. Yeah, and one thing to keep in mind with the tiebreakers and how they work, if an instance Ghostface gets a 4K here, let's say, and the Ghostface and or killer from Air Buddies is able to get a 4K around the same number of gens, we go to a gen tiebreaker thereafter. So though there might be just Nia left up, able to work on mm -hmm. these gens, even with Call of Brian giving this Ghostface a lot of information, it's worthwhile to them to just get one more gen. They might not get the escape. And with those scratch marks that we're seeing, they might not even get this unhook, but they do just in the nick of time. Clearly, the killer wants nothing to do with those second chance type perks and would much prefer to tunnel. Although, right now, hooking Nancy seems like a good idea. If I if I was in their head, I would figure out that the only person 
that has delivered to my Binia, who just got picked up. So this might be a safe bet. Even either way, they have a lot of time. They're in a really comfortable spot. They just need to play it in a way that completely denies a chance for the fourth survivor to get the hatch if it comes to that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and the one thing to keep in mind at this point in time, as the rules state, uh, bleed outs do count towards killer progressions. I mean, that if they are to somehow bleed out the Nia, which they are already halfway through their bleed out timer, it will end up getting some benefit. But Nia forcing the grab there, I mean, that the ghost face either needs to drop them or give them the hook, I mean, that they will be able to utilize deliverance, which at this point is almost a guarantee. I, yeah, I don't really know if it matters, though. Uh, with maybe no chance to heal? Oh no, yeah, I, I believe we're walking into a 4 kill. Uh, I mean, yeah, it, it all comes down to Nia's ability to come back and make something happen. They must fight for every single gen, and it is so difficult to do this under pressure. Uh, yeah, for those of you that are not super familiar with the map, would you say that this is a map that can be learned? Because I do think that at this level, survivors and killer are very familiar with how to play this map. Yeah, I mean, realistically speaking, you'd be insane uh, to think that these survivors and killers alike are not aware of every nook and cranny that this map has to offer. As someone who's played in competitive play, I can tell you that they are using a clock system and saying, hey, this location is 12 o'clock, this location is 6 o'clock, I'm at this location in communications at all times. So realistically speaking, if I'm thinking in the head of the Nancy right now, they're going to be dragging mm -hmm. them as far away from the Nia uh -huh. as possible just to get that one extra generator. So I would not be surprised yeah. in the slightest if we do see it pop here in just a few moments so a little reminder for anyone catching up just now the reason why doing a generator might be important is because the main determining factor of who wins is hook stages which are basically tied to kills but not exactly the same if a hook stage tie occurs it will come down to how many gens each team completed on on their survivor side so Arc Ooh, our killer got revealed! No way! Uh, no way! Nia wanting to look, no. but not look too close. The killer not thinking that the Nia was there, but getting that reveal and the killer instinct gave him away that there will be the 4K in favor I, of Cynic. I am speechless. I don't think you could expect anyone to perform better than this. Our killer was surgical and that little tunnel on our first survivor was he just enabled everything else everything else to fall into place what yeah, a no. difficult game from the survivors at the same time really well played they did well in body blocking trying to force the deliverance so definitely mm -hmm. showed some real skill throughout the match it's just at the end of the day the ghost face here was just able to apply so much pressure and i really do think that sloppy butcher came in clutch in so many different ways where they were forced to probably drop heals not able to get heals because of that extended mm -hmm. period of time it just shows how uh, strong the mangled status effect can really be it's also very unfortunate now we notice the the person with a med kit was the one first being uh harassed into into several hooks because normally if there's a person with a med kit and they're available they will come take hits and then perhaps heal and maybe even take more hits so unfortunately kate did not have anyone with the uh, with the privilege of being able to get quick heals to come help it was it looked like a really tough game uh from the survivor point of view but still good job getting two gens in and we'll see how it goes on the other side and whether or not uh, team cynic advances as it might look like uh, they will with such an amazing killer performance, or if it's the survivors from Air Buddies that go on. Yeah, we're gonna have to wait and see, but with that being said, we are gonna go on a quick break in between matches. So thank y'all for joining us so far. We're gonna be back as soon as we do verify the final results between Air Buddies and Cynic, but we already do know that either one of these teams will be going up against Petroleum in bracket number 125, and that is going to be semi-finals, so they'll be duking out for the final spot. But with that being said, we'll be back in just a little bit. We'll see you soon.